Spiral Jetty takes us out of the museums, out of houses, out of churches, and puts us out into nature. And the art piece is done by Robert Smithson. And the era we're putting this in basically is earthworks art, um, the time period in like early 1970s that this was done. So first of all, where are we? We have to know that. So you wanna make sure you know you're at the Great Salt Lake in Utah. And it is out there. I mean, if you want to go see the spiral jetty, you really have to be determined and to drive out in the middle of nowhere to see it. And the Great Salt Lake is exactly that. It is a lake nothing really feeds into. It, it's high salt content, content, high mineral content. So you're not getting much to grow here, just some algae, um, some fish maybe. But otherwise, there is nothing much growing. And algae, when it is at a certain level, it's going to make the water look uh, a little bit red. So supposedly, Robert, um, was, Robert Smithson was driving by this site. And uh, the area in Utah here was a site of mining. And he saw some abandoned mining equipment and just thought about the power of nature to kind of not defeat man, but kind of like nature will always win out. Uh, and so he, you know, he saw basically abandoned mining equipment, broken tools, and he thought about that and decided to create an art piece that shows really the power of nature, the ever-changing capacity of nature, the, the way things change over time. And I think this time period in the early 1970s was very much focused on the environment. 1970 was the year that you had the first Earth Day, which we typically celebrate in April. Also in the 70s, you have the establishment of the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency. So clearly there was focus on the environment and you know, our impact on the environment, which is a discussion that definitely continues to this day. So that's something very important to know. Um, some say that he chose a spiral because there was a, uh, a story associated with the Great Salt Lake that there was a whirlpool, like a spiral, if you can imagine like a whirlpool, like spiraling shape that connected this to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, that could be kind of a fantastical story that's, that he heard and then decided to do a spiral. What's interesting is a spiral is like a basic uh, shape of the, if you look at salt crystals in a microscope, you would see a spiral shape, which is interesting then to have this spiral uh, because the lake is full of salt. And you see spiral shapes throughout nature, plants, uh, mollusk like snails and their shells. It is a common uh, type of shape to see in nature. So he uses the materials of the environment. We're not gonna make an environmental piece and truck in different materials from other places. Um, but what's interesting about this, and I think one thing you really, really wanna know is that this treats an art piece in a very different way because it's not in a museum or a home or a church or some kind of building. It's a piece that no one can really sell, buy, possess. You know? And so the only way really you can experience this is to go to it directly or to experience it through photographs, kind of like we are now, um, videos, things of that nature. And those things, those photos and videos can sell for money, but one can't profit off of just the spiral jetty as a, an object. And so that's an interesting um, a thing to think about. And also that this is an art piece that is meant to change over time. And I think honestly, the artist knew that at some point this piece would just disappear over a long period of time. So it's unlike most art pieces, this is a, a piece that is constantly changing and fluxing and, 
and responding to water levels, salt levels, uh, algae levels. And so sometimes you could come here and not see anything if the water levels were high enough. Other times you'd come and there wouldn't be any water. The water would be, the tide would be way out and you could actually walk out here and it'd be perfectly dry sand. So it's constant in change and flux and that's what makes it very interesting too and suggests the power of nature and the constant evolution of nature. So I've kind of talked and addressed some of these things in content as well. Um, you know, the, the power of nature here, just knowing the, for content, just knowing the shape and what that kind of symbolizes and reflects. You know, common symbol in nature uh, can be traced down to a compound or a, the basic component of salt. Know here that the art piece constantly changes based on nature. Again, the water levels, algae levels, salt levels. And so the white you see around the rim of the, you know, the perimeter of the spiral, that's actually salt deposits. And then just kind of like the oxbow, thinking about the sublime, the power of nature. It's a similar notion here, but instead of depicting it in a romantic painting of a landscape, you're actually depicting that here in nature itself. And I know some people comment if they walk out on the piece or around it that they feel like because it's slowly disassembling and coming apart, that it can remind you of the passage of time, the power of nature, and the inevitable change in everything. So I like that about this piece. Uh, I think it's kind of a, it's a powerful message about nature, about life and about you know, trying to control something. Um, I think it's a, a multi-layered art piece with its meaning. So for function here and formal quality, I think function, uh, social commentary in terms of environmental issues, I think it can definitely be related to that. Um, and for I hope I said function with that function then again, social commentary and then formal quality, definitely the shape, the spiral and that connecting to so many different things in nature, but also that spiral and the curving line for formal quality suggests movement and that movement best relates to this concept and notion of change. Nature is constantly fluxing, changing. It reminds me of a breeze. It reminds me of a wave. You know, that motion and movement and then associating that with time and change. I think that would be our best form of quality to use. So again, Spiral Jetty, a more environmental arts piece. Uh, again, done in 1970. It's an earthwork piece where you're using the earth materials from nature in order to make the art piece. And in fact, be sure to include that, that term earth works in your uh, notes as a vocab term. And again, an art piece that utilizes the natural materials and is out in nature. Uh, and I can go over that term with you in class. So again, that is spiral jetty by Robert Smithson.